If you keep DXF files in a particular folder, you could set it to be the default folder for DXF files by switching to the Setup page, and then switching to the Defaults tab, and then clicking one of the two icons at the right edge of the data field. The icon with the yellow folder will give you the Microsoft Windows file browsing function, and the other icon will give you the Millwright file browsing function. I will click the Millwright browsing function and then select the DXF folder. There are several ways of importing a DXF file into your drawing. For this example, I'll switch to the drawing page and click the file button at the upper left corner of the screen and then select the option to import a DXF job, CNC, or XYZ file. This brings up another menu, and most people will usually select the option of importing the DXF file as editable geometry. This brings up a data entry screen. To specify which DXF file you want to import, you could click the File Data field, or click one of those two icons along the right edge of that field. The left icon will give you the Microsoft Windows file browsing function, and the right button will give you the Millwright functions. I'll click the Millwright function, and this gives me a list of the DXF files in the folder that I just selected as the default for DXF files. And there's a small preview image of each DXF file. If you want a larger image of a DXF file, you can click the Preview image or click the View button above the listing, or you could press the V key on the keyboard. When the larger size is showing, you can scroll through the DXF files with the mouse wheel or by clicking the Next or Previous buttons. There is also a button at the upper right corner to import the DXF file into the drawing. I'll go back to the file listing, and I'll click the file name of this Celtic symbol and import it into the drawing. This brings me back to the data entry screen, and now the file data field has been filled in with the folder and name of that DXF file. Underneath the file name are some of the options that you can set while you are importing the DXF file so that you don't have to bother setting them afterwards. For example, if you want all of the geometry in the DXF file to be set as cut centerline, you can set the cam operation to cut centerline. If the DXF file consists of closed polylines, and if you want the polylines that are inside of other polylines to be set differently from the outer polylines, you can specify that Millwright identify items that are inside one another. I will pick the option to set the items on the outside to be pockets and the items on the inside to be islands. The data field to set Z values to zero will let you ensure that all of the geometry in the DXF file has a Z value of zero. The reason this can be useful is because some DXF files accidentally have geometry at different Z levels, which looks okay on a computer screen in two dimensions, but when you machine it, those Z values will cause the tool to go deeper or less deep in some areas of the geometry. However, if you are importing a three-dimensional polyline and you want it to remain a three-dimensional polyline, you will want to retain the Z values rather than set them to zero. Usually, you will want to set join items together to yes so that the lines and arcs that are touching each other will be joined together into one continuous polyline. Some DXF files already have the lines and arcs joined together, but they don't all do it, so this will ensure that they are joined. Many DXF files have tiny gaps between some of the lines and arcs. Therefore, you should specify a small value in the Ignore Gaps data field. 
the keep dimensions option will let you ignore or import the dimensioning items. Most machinists want only the geometry that specifies what they will machine, not the dimensioning items, so most of them will set this data field to no. After you have set the data fields, click the OK button, and the DXF file will appear in the drawing. The XY coordinates of the geometry is whatever the DXF file specified. In this example, X0, Y0 is at the lower left corner. This is easier to see when a crosshairs are showing. You can turn the crosshairs on and off by pressing the key that has the accent mark and tilde characters, or by clicking the right mouse button on the grid button, and then selecting the option to show a crosshairs. If you want X0, Y0 to be at the center of the shape, select the option to set X0, Y0, and then select the option to pick the center of the drawing. X0, Y0 is now at the center of the drawing. Incidentally, many DXF files are not properly specifying whether the drawing is in inches, millimeters, or some other units. The person who created these Celtic drawings drew them in inches, but the DXF files mistakenly claim that the units are millimeters, and this causes the polylines to be 25 times too small. If I click the right mouse button and select the measure function, and then measure from one side of the item to the other, you can see that the shape is only 0 0.087 inches in size, which is almost microscopic. When you see this problem, the solution is to click the menu button, and then select the option to scale the drawing, and then either scale it up or down by 25.4 or scale it to whatever size you want it to be. Now the drawing is about 2.2 inches in size, about 56 millimeters, which is more sensible. This DXF drawing consists of only two polylines. When I imported the DXF file, I specified that Millwright is to identify the outsides and insides, and set the outsides to be pockets and the insides to be islands. If I let the mouse hover over this polyline, its parameters appear on the right side of the screen. The item tab shows that it is a polyline with 100 links, and if I press the tab key on the keyboard to switch to the tool tab, I can see that this polyline has been set to pocket. When these data fields are showing, I can slide the mouse over to them to edit them. Note that you can also press the E key on the keyboard. The E is for edit. Millwright will then move the mouse to the data fields for you. This allows you to edit the tool information. Note that some of the data fields have an arrow that points downward. The arrow shows that when you click those data fields, there will be a menu of some type. For example, I'll click the Tool Data field, and more tool information appears. When you are finished editing the parameters, move the mouse back into the drawing. It will have a question mark because Millwright does not know whether you want to go back to the drawing or you're just moving the mouse away from the parameters area. To let Millwright know that you want to go back to the drawing, just click one time in the drawing. If your drawing has only two items, as this example, it is easy to change the tool information by letting the mouse hover over one of the items and then moving the mouse to the right side of the screen and adjusting its tool parameters. However, most of the time you're going to have a lot of items in the drawing. And if you want to change all of them at the same time, there are better methods than doing it one at a time like this. To show you a better method, I will first close and abandon this job, and then pick the option to import a DXF file, but this time I will select a DXF file with more polylines in it. 
As with the other Celtic drawing, I have to scale this one up by 25.4. Now to set the tool for this job. This design has nine polylines. It would be a waste of time to set the tool for each polyline, one at a time. When you want several polylines to have the same tool information, it is easier to click the menu button at the upper left corner, or press the escape key on the keyboard for that menu, and then select the tool functions option. And then select the option to change the tool settings by typing values with the keyboard for lines, circles, and other geometry. This brings up a third menu. In this example, the polylines that I want to alter are set to be pockets, so I will pick the option to adjust the finishing tool of pockets or contours. This brings up data fields that are blank. A message on the right side of the screen reminds you that if you leave a data field blank, whatever value the polylines are already set to will retain their original value. Therefore, you enter values only in the data fields that you want to change. You leave the others blank. I will set the tool number to 3. I will select a flat tool with a diameter of 0 0.06 units and give it a cutting depth of 0 0.05 units. I will set a few other data fields and then click the OK button. A message flashes that nine items were set. Now when I let the mouse hover over one of the polylines, I can see that the tool information has just changed to what I specified. If I want to cut some of the nine polylines deeper than the others, I can let the mouse hover over one of the polylines that I want to change and then give it a deeper cutting depth. Rather than set the others in the same manner, I can click the menu button at the upper left corner and then select the tool functions and then select the copy settings from one item to another. The message at the top of the screen reminds me to pick the item that has the settings that I want to copy to other items. So I click the item that I just set to cut deeper. That causes the message to change to tell me to click the items that I want to give those settings to, or I could draw a box around the items. When the mouse is hovering over one of the items, some of its parameters appear on the right side of the screen to give you an idea of what that item has already been set for. When you are done setting the tool information for your DXF file, switch to the 3D view page to see how it looks. And you can switch to the 3D model if you want an idea of how it will look as a finished part. Note that the colored button at the top of the page lets you change how the model appears. You can choose a texture or you can have deeper cuts show darker. You can also click your right mouse button for some more options, such as making the uncut areas of the part become invisible. This shows you only what the tool is going to cut. When the tool information appears correct, switch to the NC program page to access the CNC code. You can click the Show Tool Path button if you want to see the actual path that the CNC program is specifying. And you can draw slowly if you want to watch the tool cut and see the order it cuts. And you can get an estimate of the machining time.